Now, one of the joys of working with found wood or stuff from a local sawyer is the fact that you get to work with material that isn't commonly available. For example, I'm working on this bookcase project and it's made out of some white fur that was grown in town here and came down in a storm. Logan sawed it up into planks and now I'm using it here. And for the most part, I've been able to work with the characteristics of the material. I got some nice looking grain, some fun little mineral streaks and a little cracks in it. And I've avoided being able to have to feature or highlight some of the knots that are often found in softwood. However, as you'll see on the inside of this side panel, I got a pretty big one right here. And if it were solid, I might be able to let it slide since it's on the inside, but sending it through the planer caused some pretty bad chip out. So what I want to do is patch it with a small piece of wood that's going to disguise it, not going for something totally invisible here, just something that's going to blend in with the look that I'm aiming for on this project. And I wanted to show you how I'm going to do it. So what I have is a simple router template that I made from a long strip of plywood. So I glued it up to create a rectangular window that's a little bit wider and a little bit longer than the size of this knot that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to attach it with some double-sided tape. I want to line it up so that I'm going to remove the biggest area of a fence here. And don't forget to clamp down your piece because you don't want it sliding around. Right now I have a small plunge router here set with a little tiny uh, dado cleanout bit or a mortising bit, sometimes they're called. It has a bearing on it that's going to follow around the edge of the template and just a shallow cutting depth. That helps minimize some of the chatter and vibration that you can get on much longer bits. And the other nice thing here is that this doesn't have to be structural. It's purely cosmetic, so I don't need to go down very far. So I'll make a pass all the way around here and then square up the edges. All right, round router bits have a hard time with corners. So I'm going to leave the template in place and come in here with a chisel, start here on this corner over here, and make a cross grain paring cut right down the edge using the corner and the sides of the template to guide the chisel and clean out just those little pieces of waste in there. All right, that's pretty short work. Now we'll pull this template off. All right, there you can see. About an eighth of an inch deep and nice and rectangular. Now it's time to make the patch that's going to fit in there. All right, the other part of this equation here is making a patch that's going to fit that recess. Now I started with a thicker piece of material that I had as an offcut from the project parts here. And then at the table saw, I cross cut a length of it and ripped it to width. I used the template as kind of a go, no go gauge so that I want kind of a snug fit in there. Then I took the blank over to the bandsaw and resawed just a section of it off and then cross cut it so that it matches the length. I want it pretty snug here. Now a word about the blank that you choose is I was you know, I'm going for something that's as invisible as possible, but I'm not stressing myself out over it. So I found a piece that had similar grain pattern, definitely similar color. And when I put it in place here, what I want is it to not attract a lot of attention. So now that I'm at this stage, what we can do is glue it in place. From my other videos, you'll know that I'm kind of a slow set glue person to give me plenty of opportunity to get an assembly together. This is not one of those occasions. So I'm using Titebond's speed set glue here. So I'm just going to butter the bottom here with a nice film of the glue. Now I can fit it in place. Since this fur is pretty soft, 
can use a good amount of persuasion on it here. And get it down in there. We'll let this set up for about 15, 20 minutes and then plane it flush for the big reveal. All right, here we are. This is the patch all planed flush. Now you remember I glued it in and it was pretty thick, but since this is softwood, you kind of feel like a superhero planing away all that material and having it not tear out on you. So what I have here is exactly what I was looking for, a patch that roughly matches the material and the grain of the wood around it. It's not invisible, but it's not gonna catch your eye once this bookcase is complete. There are eight ways to Sunday on how to patch wood. This is a method that I turn to a lot, and I really enjoy using my router and creating a simple template to get the job done. Hope you like it.